Okay, I'm back. All right, I had a quick dinner and a good laugh about what happened earlier, but we are going to check on our first cup, and we're doing really good. Again, it was a thin coat. Um, I'm not super worried about smoothing out the glitter with this coat because the second coat's going to really smooth that out, um, but it's looking really, really good, and it's... Um, It's leveling out very nicely. I like this epoxy. It seems to, to work really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove my tape. And so I'm going to grab the end. And this you're, you're going to get sticky. You might want to wear gloves. So sorry, you're having to look at the back of my hand. So I'm going to grab the end of the tape. And I'm going to spin it around. And so, as you can see, I have some of the epoxy on my tape. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to save that piece of tape because it's very tempting to want to touch the mug so that you can see if it's, uh, if it's dry and hard or not. But you don't want to do that. You want to not touch it and not get prints in it. Because once it starts to set and it's curing, you can leave a fingerprint in it. Um, but then if you have the tape, you can just come and, and you can touch your tape. So now I'm taking it off the bottom. I don't need to save all of these pieces. So throw the rest of them away. To find my end here. And, uh, so that was really weird down here. I'm videoing. I hear footsteps. I'm thinking maybe it's my daughter um, coming to say dinner's ready or to take the dog out and it is Brian. And he comes down here and he starts working and I freeze up. Freaked me out. So I have a feeling that the audio might not be fabulous because I started whispering to you guys and I choked up and wasn't talking. But we're going to cover everything I would have said then now so here we have our beautiful top there's a little spot right here I doubt you can see it but there's a little spot where the epoxy leaked up under where my tape was overlapping and so what I'm gonna do is grab my acetone Again, this is from Home Depot or Lowe's. I, Home Depot is closer, so that's usually where I go. Um, and I'm just going to dip my brush. This one's still pretty full, so I could dip it in there. You could pour it into um, a little container or something. Sometimes I have little, the, the little glass of short mason jars like you can get Hobby Lobby and stuff, and I'll put some acetone in there, but I don't have one here right now. So, and we're very wet with that. Hold on. And you do want to be careful with breathing this in. I don't know if you guys can hear it. I do have the air filter running right now because of the epoxy. But this epoxy doesn't doesn't have a smell, so we're doing good. So I'm just going to kind of rub that spot with my acetone. Acetone is it's one of its um, uses is cleaning up epoxy, but you want to do it, your best bet is to do it while it's wet. So, just going to go around and make sure that we're good. And man, that's looking good. And I'm, I'm going to throw this out. Um, I'm not going to save that. Again, it's with your coupon at Hobby Lobby, it's $3.40 for 50 of those things. They're not worth trying to salvage. So, this cup's doing really good. If I had done a really thick coat, I would be needing to rotate it more because you'd be seeing drips come down. And when we do the second coat, it's going to be thicker, so you might you might get to see some of that. And we're going to see. We're going to move on to the second cup, but we're going to do this other epoxy that I have. And I need a new cup. So here's my cup. And this is the. 
um, East Coast Resin Crystal Clear Epoxy. And I've used this in larger bottles as well. I've used it up, which is why I decided to try a new one. But I still had a little bit in these little bottles. And so um, I've kind of been hanging on to these. And I'm going to use these on the other. I wanted you guys to be able to see two different types of epoxy being used um, in action. So I'm going to go to my scale. This one has to stir for longer, so we're going to talk a little bit while we're doing that, and I'm going to tear. And this one is equal parts. The bottles are the same size. They're going to be equal parts, and it'll say on there what it is. And so I'm going to do my hardener first, and I'm going to do um, I'm going to do I think maybe 15 grams. Or, I'm sorry, I've been saying, yeah, 15 grams. Here we go. I was going to say, I was saying ounces before, but I wasn't. I was on grams. He just threw me off. He has, he has thrown off my mojo. Um, it's really funny because I'm not, I'm not a shy person, and I'm not shy around him. But there was just something about talking to my phone camera <laughs> to a bunch of imaginary people. With him walking around down here. Um, he does some cool stuff with resin too. He uses a slightly different kind of resin. And uh, maybe one day we'll talk about that. I'm going to gonna try to get some pictures of some of the stuff that he does. And um, he, wa he wants me to film him. He says, I want to be a, a vlogger. Um, and I've corrected him. But he, he thinks it's kind of cool. He gives me a hard time. But he thinks it's kind of cool that anybody actually would want to listen to me talk so this one is much thicker and my scale is not doing anything I'm starting to get concerned here it's not going up why are we not going up it's literally stuck okay it's working it's just so little coming out. Again, the resin part of epoxy is much thicker. And the reason I'm doing this on a scale instead of like the two cups next to each other, I have no idea. Okay. Um, is because it's imperative. I don't know why this has gotten so thick. It is imperative that your ratios are even. If they're not, then your epoxy is not going to fully cure. Um, and you're going to have like a tacky finish that's just not going to set. So what do we do if that happens? So let's say you didn't mix it well enough. Or you didn't have your ratios right and you've got that tacky feeling uh, let it sit for you know 24 hours see if it gets any better maybe wait 36 or 48 hours see if it gets any better and then you're going to add another coat of epoxy on top if it's if you're touching it and it's liquid like this you need to remove it and start over but if it's just a little tacky to the feeling, to the touch. Add another coat of epoxy over it. Um, make sure your ratios are right. Now we're getting somewhere. This scale is kind of freaking me out. But I'm hoping that one of the things that you can learn, we went a little over. So I went almost an entire gram over, which is another good reason to use a scale. So I'm just going to add enough of my part one to even it out. The scale's acting really funny. I'm gonna have to go back to the kitchen scale that I had. That one's it's making me nervous. So, but one of the things that I hope you're seeing from these little hiccups that I'm having is that it's not always perfect and things happen and mistakes happen, but you just learn how to work with them. So this one turns kind of white and streaky. 
when you first mix it together and I don't know if you can see that and as this brand does it I'm sure other brands do it too but this one it, it really kind of freaks you out when you first do it so the trick is to stir it until it is crystal clear and like I said this one takes a little longer so all right we're gonna get into why I'm using different types of epoxy and I mentioned the other day that I was not too happy with the fact that that it turned that the white cup that I had done had some you can't, probably can't see it had some coffee stains on it where the coffee had run down and that was with this epoxy and it stained it a little bit and um, Again, if this this silver cup or the blue cup or a purple cup or a red cup, you probably wouldn't be able to notice it. But uh, almost always when I make something for myself, it's white or it's holographic, um, and I don't want I don't want to be be doing something that's going to stain. And if a customer wants a white cup, I don't want them to come back in a couple months and say, you know, I really like my cup, but it's got coffee stains all over it. So. I'm, I was trying to find a product that wasn't going to do that. So I'm still stirring. You're still a little white. Again, you want to stir until it's crystal clear. And this is the one that the first batch I ever made, um, I whipped it. Like I was stirring the heck out of it and it just turned into a giant cup of foam. And I just had to chuck it. I think I stirred that thing for like 15 minutes. <laughs> like it's white it's not going clear and I realized I had done something wrong but uh, it was the first time working with this brand so that was a learning experience and so again I want to scrape the sides of the cup and this is why I like the cups that don't have all the grooves down the side of them it's because it's much easier to scrape the cup and make sure because that the product on the side of the cup if you were to, to take your brush and try to clean it all off, it's just gonna you're gonna have a part of the epoxy that hasn't been mixed with the hardener, and it's just not gonna cure. So this one goes for a while. And I'm just gonna stir, stir, stir. I'm really nervous about playing back the the other video that I did. I'm hoping that it's not completely horrible. You guys have been so kind in your comments, and I'm just going to let you down with that one, and I really hope that I don't, so I'm sorry, but we're going to go here. All right, so I have more than enough epoxy. I did not want to underdo it. Um, this is more than I would normally use, but I didn't want y'all to have to see me remake epoxy twice. Okay, so we need another foam brush. And we're going to move this closer to here and kind of get right up there. All right, I'm trying to get it in here, not hit the other one. So again, we have our 30 ounce tumbler and it's the same process. Y'all have already seen this once before. So I'm just going to brush this on and again, I'm working from the base to the front simply because um, these aren't on here tight and I'm scared that if I pull it this way I'm gonna get dragged and I'm gonna pull the cup off so it's not some scientific reason that I'm brushing in this direction and be careful on this lip that you're not your brush isn't skipping over it and missing it so really make sure that you get your your brush in there um, and get that covered so again right this second I'm just worried about getting it all over the entire cup and then I'm gonna go back and check for spots and I'll tell you these spray painted and spray glitter tumblers like this with the glitter blast it's a lot easier to see where you've been than with the um, completely loose glittered cups it's really hard to tell where you've been and again I have a, a plastic piece of plastic um, underneath because I've already had one drip 
and I don't have to worry about ruining anything with it dripping. If it was over a, over your kitchen floor or something like that, you'd really want to be careful that you weren't dripping it on your hardwoods or your tile. And if it cures, it's really hard to get up without ruining the finish of whatever it's on. This epoxy is a little more runny than the other one. So it does take a little more babysitting. And again, I do not have an electric motor, obviously. I'm not using a rotisserie. Um, my standard schedule for working with these cups is the first like 15 minutes, I babysit. I sit with it and I, um, I turn it often you know every minute every two minutes whatever it needs you're gonna get some drips and some runs it's going to pull towards the bottom of your cup and that's okay as long as you're turning it um, again it's self leveling so it's trying to go to the lowest point that it can get to um, and we want that that's what gives it that nice glossy glassy look um, so we have got this one nice and covered and again because it's not loose glitter it didn't take as much uh, like I said I was a little concerned about running out again I'm usually pretty stingy with my epoxy because um, I've done enough of these but I just didn't that other one again that's new to me and I wasn't exactly sure, and that loose glitter just seems to really suck it up a lot more than this type of tumbler. So I'm just going to kind of go around, make sure it's smooth. This one you've got maybe a 30 to 60 minute window with it as well, and it depends on temperature and humidity. Um, it is... 53 degrees outside and I've got the kerosene heater going in here it's um, in the other room you can probably see it in the camera um, to try to kind of keep it if nothing else comfortable for me um, down here so and I'll leave the heater on probably for another two hours and then I'll turn it off because at that point it, it's just gonna be sitting so the first 15 minutes we've got look how much I have left I'm gonna weigh this and see how much because we did 32 grams because I went a little over so I had to even it out so one, two. I have <laughs> I have 25.4 grams left so I used like seven grams <laughs> of epoxy to do a 30 ounce cup um, you know I say that I could do I could do two coats of a cup with half an ounce of epoxy so um, definitely definitely doable again I think that the loose glitter just really ate up that ate up the epoxy um, I do use a little more with loose glitter especially if it's if it's chunkier than this look at that you can see it shining, can't you? You can't tell how holographic it is, but you can see it shining. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of we're gonna be going back and forth here. So I'm just going to turn again for about the first 15 minutes. So it's 7:30. So y'all help me remember that I that I did this one at 7:30. I'm just gonna kind of babysit it and and check on it and make sure that it's that it's epoxy stays moving. So after about the first 15 minutes, I'm going to turn it about every 15 minutes for the next hour. So 7:30. So at seven, it, you know, I'm going to babysit it till about 7:45, and then um, I'm going to check on it at 8, 8:15, and 8:45. So that's the next hour, and then. Um, I'll probably bump it up to 20 or 30 minutes. So we'll go, the last one was 8.45. So 9.15, uh, 
and then I'll probably bump it up maybe even more if at 9.45. I'll probably do the next one at 10.30. Check on it again at 11.30, and I'm done. And I don't really see many bubbles on this one, but we're going to run it over with the torch anyway. You don't have to do this. You can sand out bubbles if you get them. You have to wait for it to cure. But this will get them. And notice I'm not holding it. I'm, I'm running it. I need to leave it on. This one's got a setting that just keeps it on. There we go. Just moving it around real quick. And I'm not putting the flame into the cup. I'm just kind of running it over the cup. And this only needs to be done right in the beginning. You don't need to do this the whole time. Uh, your bubbles are going to kind of show up right away. And then after that, they're, they, don't really, they don't really show up anymore. You will sometimes get bubbles around a decal because of the gases with, uh, the, and the adhesive on the decal are going to release little bubbles around the decal. Just be really careful if you're using a torch that you don't get it too close or hold it there because it can, um, it can melt your, your decal. So, I know one of the things I said I was going to talk about was the FDA thing. And again, I want to give you a disclaimer that I'm not, I'm not a chemist. I'm not a, um, I don't work for the FDA. I don't do anything like that. But I want to talk about, about all of this. And again, this is my opinion. This is not the law that I, as I know it, this isn't, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not an expert. I'm not going to sit here and say that I know better than anybody else about anything. Uh, hopefully you guys could tell that I'm open to doing things however you want to do them. If you want to change something up, by all means, change it up. Th this is not the only way to do this. These aren't the only products to use. These aren't the only um, methods. And my feelings about epoxy and the FDA don't trump any other information anywhere. I'm just telling you how I feel, why I feel that way, and giving you a lot of information. And I think that it is up to every single person to do the research and find out as much as they can and make the decision that works best for them. If you are making these for personal use, by all means, do whatever you want. If you're making them to sell, you need to keep that in uh, keep that in mind. Um, you should, if you're selling products, especially if you're doing craft fairs or having people come to your house to pick up items, uh, things like that, you should have um, insurance, liability insurance with your business. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sure how that, I'm just going to rotate my cup. I'm not sure how exactly the cup factors in, um, if, if the insurance company cares. Um, but you should, you should have insurance if you're, if you're selling to the public. Um, the East Coast that I've been using is, these are what's called tabletop epoxies. They are made and marketed primarily for using on like kitchen tables or coffee tables or bars like at a restaurant where you go and you know the tables have that nice thick shiny coat on top of them it's probably epoxy and it's these epoxies that we're using um, that are non-toxic and safe for environments in which food is served so if you're sitting in a bar or at a table and it's coated in epoxy that has dried and cured and you drop a french fry if you pick it up and eat it you're fine well unless there's some other kind of cooties on the table and cooties is absolutely a technical term um, but assuming that it's clean, 
it's nothing's gonna happen to you um and lord please don't um quote me on anything again this is my opinion and i'm not an expert but we come into to contact with those type of surfaces all the time and and um you know, in your own home, your kitchen table might be coated in epoxy and food hits it and you pick it up and eat it and it's not a big deal. The, I'm trying to be as neutral as I can on all of this. So they're all labeled, not all, not all epoxies, all the ones I've worked with are labeled as non-toxic and they're tabletop epoxies. So if you were, and by non-toxic, I mean after it's dried and cured, do not <laughs> tip up a bottle of epoxy um, in liquid form and consume it. And if you get it on your hands and whatnot, wash them. Um, it's, it's in liquid form. It's not, you don't want to, you don't want to be consuming that. But again, we're talking about cured, hardened, dry epoxy. Um, and then you have your FDA approved epoxies. And they're FDA approved for food contact. So that is a, another term that can be used on your product labeling to help market your item. It doesn't mean if it doesn't say safe for food contact that it's not. It just means that they have not obtained either they didn't try, they don't care, maybe they got denied. But they have not obtained a rating from the FDA to be able to put that on their product. The FDA says that, that you can't just put whatever you want on a label. Um, you have to pass certain regulations to be able to do that, like the kind of like the USDA certified organic. You can't just slap that on anything. So um, just because it's not on there doesn't mean it's not. But the FDA approved epoxy is FDA approved for food contact. It's not FDA approved for lining the inside of a Tupperware that you're going to put spaghetti sauce in for a week in your refrigerator. That's not what that means. Um, with a cup coated in epoxy that's dried and hardened you can see I don't cover the lip area so when I'm drinking my coffee I'm not coming anywhere in contact with this and even if I were it's dried and cured it's made for countertops it's made for bar tops it's made for tabletops so it's not going to cause me any kind of harm do you want to say hi my daughter came down here to take the dog out. Come on. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to Facebook. This is the Silhouette Cameo Inspiration Group. And it's about, sick. look at me. There's about 150,000 of some of the sweetest, craftiest, most um, ingenious ladies and gentlemen that I've ever come in contact with. So just imagine 150,000 more of me. Horrible. This is Taylor. She's 16, junior in high school. She's going to grow up to be a marine biologist. She's wearing one of my creations. You can't see it. It says, uh, My fin's mine, and it's got a shark on there and a little bit of dog hair. So, all right, I got to finish talking to him about epoxy. Are you crying? No, I need to blend out my face. Oh, she has not blended her makeup, and the dog needed to go out, so she got interrupted. Um, she's going to be making makeup videos at some point uh so anyway back to the epoxy and don't watch me it's creepy <laughs> i can't see you anything so um again i'm not putting it up to the lip and th there's a reason i do that is because even though i'm not concerned about my bottom lip coming into contact with dried cured hardened tabletop epoxy I'm also not stupid when it comes to liability and um, just saying whatever uh, and not thinking about that. So she's distracting me. I'm sorry. So again, that's why I don't carry it up to the lip. 
that's kind of my feeling on the FDA. So I told you I have a background in cosmetic chemistry and I taught a lot of cosmetic chemistry and cosmetics are not regulated by the FDA. The only thing in cosmetics that is regulated by the FDA is colorants. And we're not going to get into the chemistry. I could get into the organic and non-organic types of food coloring and, and all of that stuff. But those are the only things. And you will find when you're searching for glitter, you will find that some glitters are rated as cosmetic safe glitters. And that means that they're safe to use around the eye and the mouth. If they're not cosmetic grade glitter, then they shouldn't be used around the eyes and the mouth. But that's it. The only time the FDA steps in and says anything about the ingredients in cosmetics is when it has been proven to cause harm. So if they're selling a product and the FDA starts getting a whole bunch of reports of it causing harm to people, then the FDA says, well, okay, hold on. Let's figure out what's going on. We're going to pull this off the market. We're going to research and find out. That's the only time the FDA ever steps in with cosmetics. Where do we put cosmetics? On our lips, on our eyes, on our waterline, around all sorts of mucous membranes that are on our face that get absorbed into our body. And those are non-toxic, just like my table pop, tabletop epoxy that I'm using. Um, and people are using it all the time. The Max Clear that I bought is FDA compliant resin for tabletops. Tabletop epoxy, non-toxic. Tabletop epoxy labeled as FDA compliant. So that just means that they've avoided ingredients that the FDA doesn't want them to put on um, tabletops and things like that. So this whole FDA, make sure you're using an epoxy that's FDA and approved and all of that stuff. It's fine if you want to make sure that you're using an epoxy that says FDA approved, that's fine. I'm not telling anybody not to. I'm saying educate yourself on why, if you feel that that's important, that you do that. Um, make sure that your epoxy is like a tabletop epoxy and that it is non-toxic. Um, they have marine epoxies that don't say tabletop, they're marine, they're meant to go on like boats with fiberglass and things that are submerged in water. I, I don't use that, I have not done the research on that to know, so because I don't know anything about it, I'm certainly not gonna use a marine grade epoxy, right? Don't, don't just, just because I say I use this one, it's great. Don't just take my word for it and use it. Research it. Find out what you're doing, especially if this is a business, because it's going to reflect on you and your business and everything and the products that you use. So the, the Santa cookie plates with the 651 Oracle vinyl on them and the vinyl's not food safe. The vinyl's not food. Vinyl is made out of um, plastics that we store our food in, that we drink soda out of, that we pour medicine into plastic cups to give to our children. Baby bottles are made out of plastics, um, and there's different types of plastics, and you should know the different, the different types, but vinyl is plastic. It's the adhesive on the vinyl that is not food safe. Don't eat it. If you have a cookie and it comes in, in, in um, contact with a, um, a piece of vinyl on the paper and you eat it, I don't think you're, you're going to put yourself in the hospital. And I'm not dismissing anybody that feels strongly about don't use 651 on a can of cookie plate and put a cookie on it. I, I have all the respect in the world for everybody's opinion and what they want. And if you keep your leftovers in glass containers and you don't use a microwave and you 
um, are very self-conscious about the things that are going into your body and coming in contact with your food, then I have the absolute utmost respect for you. But this project probably isn't for you. The paint is not food safe. The glitter, by no stretch of the imagination, is that food safe. Um, so the epoxy itself on top, yes, it's encasing everything else, but um, you look at all of the components that are going into this. And again, I just don't carry mine up to the lip. And I, I wear lipstick a lot, and I've never had my lipstick touch where my epoxy is. I've never had it happen. Um, it always stays up, and that's why I like the width of that tape to kind of set that there. So I'm really hoping that I've not offended anybody because that's not my intention. The point that I'm trying to make here is don't just take somebody's word for it because they feel strongly about it. Um, I'm probably not the best example because I still have nail polish that's not three free that has formaldehyde in it and I wear it and I, I microwave pasta sauce in a Tupperware container and I reuse the, the plastic butter tubs for for leftovers and things like that which are all things that that certain groups are advising against but just know that any opinion that you have about anything you can find information online that agrees with you and backs you up. So don't just look for either information that agrees with you or information that disagrees with somebody else. Look up both sides. Educate yourself on the A side and the B side. And sometimes there's even a C side. And find out the C side. I want to go to the beach. Um, Sometimes you will learn something that you wouldn't have learned before and um, you'll really be able to make a informed decision that you can feel comfortable about and then when somebody disagrees with you, you have the knowledge to carry on an actual conversation and not just a, well, you have to do this and they say, why? Well, because that's what, that's what Linda said. No, Linda didn't say anything. Linda didn't say you don't have to use FDA approved epoxy. Linda didn't say don't use FDA approved epoxy. Linda didn't say one's better than the other. Linda says do the research, take into account what you're using it for, what you care about, what's important to you, do the research and make the decision for yourself. Um, that's all I can say about that. It's not, we're not coating the inside of the cup. We're not storing foods in it. You're not heating foods in it. Please do not put a stainless steel tumbler in the microwave. Mm -mm. I, had a, I've, I've had an instance where somebody put a stainless steel bowl in a microwave to heat up water and that was, that was ugly. Um, yeah, don't do that. So I'm just sitting here turning my cup and they're coming out fabulous. And y'all either, right now I think everybody probably hates me. I get, I get a little passionate about things sometimes. And one of the things I'm passionate about is people taking their knowledge and their decisions in their own hands and not relying on anybody else. Um, and when somebody does tell you something, even if it's exactly what you wanted to hear, um, Find, find some information on it to back it up. Don't, and don't take me for my word on anything. It's just my opinion. I'm a person. Every person has an opinion. Um, good gravy. It's January 20th. It's Inauguration Day. I've seen everybody's opinion today. And I respect absolutely every single one of those opinions. I'll, I will give mine, but that doesn't mean if my opinion's different than yours, that you're wrong. It just means that I, um, I have a different opinion, and that's perfect. That's, that's awesome. Um, that's one of the reasons why this group is so great. So I am removing my tape from my tumbler. I think I need to stop talking about all of this FDA stuff because I'm going to make somebody mad. Do not report me to the admins. Again, I am giving my opinion. I am telling you that... Either way is 
fine. FDA, not FDA. If you are a chemical engineer and you work for an epoxy company or you work for the FDA and you have some white papers that can prove something one way or the other, I welcome you to private message me and let's have a conversation. If I am saying something and there are legitimate white paper documents to prove me wrong or to correct a mistake, I am by all means receptive to learning about it. I, again, as a teacher, spend a lot of time researching the things that I'm going to talk to people about. And so this conversation did not come without forethought of consequences or anything else. Um, it's not just stuff that I'm making up. If you were to look at my internet history for the last month of all the research that I've done on this, then you would know what I was talking about as far as I do my homework. There's and I definitely, you know, sometimes I hear something and I'm like, but I've been using nail polish with formaldehyde in it for 20 years and it hasn't hurt me yet. You know, yeah, that might be the case. But um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to throw out what I already have and I understand why they take it off the market and why they make a deal about it I respect that again I res and I respect the experts and if somebody knows more than me about something um, I would love to talk to them because I'm gonna pick your brain and I'm gonna learn as much as I can I absolutely love surrounding myself with people that know more than I do people with different opinions than me and um, I don't get threatened by anything like that because the only way to learn is to educate and that goes for anything my cups are freaking amazing you guys look at that look look at that look at it oh man they look so good again these are the first cups that i've taped the bottom off and i wasn't sure what i was going to think but i actually like it better than when i put the epoxy on the bottom and the paint on the bottom see that and that i think that's pretty sharp I'm still mad about my coffee stain. You can't see the glitter on that one, can you? But. So, it is now 7.54. This is a long video. So this one, this one's good. I mean, I'm going to, every 15 minutes or so, I'm going to come back down and check on it and make sure. But I did a thin enough coat that it's not pooling. I was really kind of hoping something was going to go wrong as far as drips and things like that so that you could see what we do but these are going to cure and I'm just gonna come down and like I said I'm gonna come down every little while and just turn it come to this one and turn it and I'm gonna do that for every 15 minutes or an hour and then stretch it out after about two or three hours I'm pretty set to just let them sit here um, overnight I can come down in the morning I've got my tape remember I saved my tape and I can if I touch it, it's sticky on here. So if I test it on my tape, then I know that if it's still sticky there, that it's still sticky on my cup and I don't want to touch my cup. So uh, if you happen to get a fingerprint or something in there, we can fix it before the second coat of epoxy, but we'd really like to be able to avoid that at all costs. So, um, but they're looking really, really good. I'm really excited. I think that these are going to turn out. So in about 24 hours from now, when these have cured, we're going to put decals on them. And then we're going to do a second coat of epoxy, which is going to be the same, but a little thicker. And I imagine with that one that we're going to get to see some runs and some drips and things like that. But sometimes if I do it too thick under here, at the bottom of these cups and down here, you'll see the epoxy just starts to, it, it starts to pool down. 
and then you flip it and you can just watch and that kind of just settles and spreads out um, and and then you know you come back in a little while so don't freak out if you if you put on too much epoxy and you see that pool and just just flip it and sometimes I've marked I didn't do it this time I guess I've done it enough that I didn't think about it um, if you mark your tape with like a sharpie or something or you can even do like a one two three four around it and so you kind of know where you were before when you turn it and that epoxy that was on my finger just got on the cup so um, there we have it and again I hope I didn't offend anybody that's not my intention I welcome conversation about it um, I do ask that just because it's such a large group of people um, that you PM me about it and we can discuss it in private so that we don't cause any crazy fights but again I'm not saying to go one way or the other I'm telling you to educate yourself and make that decision for yourself don't just take somebody's word for it especially somebody that you don't know and so again we have the max I need to clean off the outside of my bottles I'm really not happy with the with how I have to pour these out of the bottle this one is the FDA compliant for tabletops approved on Amazon 48 ounce kit so if I were to just mix both of these together completely I would get a total of 48 ounces and I think that was 4550 and then the East Coast resin this is also from Amazon and let me tell you something if I find something online somewhere more often than not I will go to Amazon and see if they have it there even if I'm buying it from the same place because um, if it's a new company that I've never worked with before Amazon has that totally awesome A to Z guarantee where you can get your money back if there's an issue um, and so I like having that protection this is an 8 ounce kit I think this was like 12 or 13 dollars they have a 16 ounce kit I think it's like 19 or 20 dollars and then another one I haven't used it but the Alumalite clear cast that you can get at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or Amazon um, <clears throat> you can order that as well and use that and it's a one-to-one -one. it works a lot like the smaller bottles the East Coast resin um, and I do intend on trying it at some point I just haven't again direct from the manufacturer you can only get it in an 8 ounce kit and I think it's a maybe a 128 ounce which would be two half gallon jugs it might it might be a um, it might be a, a two gallon kit I can't remember exactly but it was like $118 and shipping $7 and I didn't want to order the tiniest kit they had but I didn't want to order like 128 ounces of it either especially if I wasn't gonna like it and that one is an FDA compliant epoxy as well so if that's important to you um, that's an option if buying it in a store is important to you that's an option I've actually not looked on the shelf at the hardware stores and whatnot to see what epoxies they carry I do plan on, on doing that this weekend and seeing what's out there but um, that's why I haven't really talked about what epoxy I use yet is because I wanted to give you guys some background on why I choose what I choose and how to make the right choice for you um, so that's why I've waited and uh, man these cups look good all right, so it's like we're going on like 48 minutes, and I'm sure y'all are done listening to me jabber jabber. So um, I'm going to get these up, and if anything crazy happens tonight with these cups when I come check on them, I'm going to film it. But otherwise, I'll probably just do something real quick tomorrow about, you know, kind of where we are and prepping our decal and all that stuff in anticipation of them being dry and ready to go. So... Uh, thank you guys very much again as always and until next time y'all have a good Friday night